And, um, and, and some of you may have heard about it on WUSF, the, the um, public radio followed us, and we had a NPR segment and covers it. Cover section covers a different sort of paper and things. So we've, we've started to get the ball rolling in terms of awareness, but that's what that's what this is all about. Um, so starting in Everglades, um, when I saw Carlton give a presentation at the Everglades Coalition meeting, I looked at the, the, the trail you guys were going to take, and I have been in these environments as well. I, I've been here for 23 years working on Everglades and Florida Bay issues, and I've been to those places, but I've been to them by helicopter. So the kayak and then the push pole, and you, you're going to have to get out and walk. Uh, I admire what this crew is doing. Uh, it is a remarkable one. It is critical that we recognize these places, not just Florida Bay, but all of the Everglades. And all of the unique places in Florida. And that's what this trip is all about, is, is bringing attention to these gorgeous places that most people, most tourists don't see. So there'll be, there'll be five or six little snippets like that that I'll share. And they might catch me off guard because I'm not looking at my laptop screen to know what's coming next. That's <laughs> accurate the slideshow. But um, it, it was, it was an unbelievable experience to, to you know, finally take that first stroke on January 17th because it had been I mean, more than a year of planning, but a year of intensive planning because I really, you know, the, the political implications of trying to do something like this, um, you know, we, we designed a route where there was no controversy. Every place we went, we were welcome to be. We camped on 23 of cattle ranches. We crossed land owned by every state federal agency you can think of and had to meet with agency heads or people from all those groups and, it, um, and, and just physically laying down a thousand mile route hundred yards at a time on Google Earth you know, took like three months so um, it was it was like a relief to actually be able to go um, and it's a miracle we finished uh, like my kayak had been in water until the day it went in the water there and the fact that it didn't sink and all that and we got <laughs> but this is um, this is that ten thousand islands Everglades landscape. Um, you saw this picture getting made during the video. A nice, um, you know, two hours into the trip, a saltwater uh, crocodile hanging out on a mangrove root to welcome us into the Everglades. Um, this is one of the more memorable experiences. You to actually push pull our kayaks for the sawgrass because it was so shallow you couldn't really paddle them. And he kind of, kind of felt like a glazed in from old times in a plywood boat, like an old gator poacher or something. But um, we were, um, you know, we went three days without seeing another person through, through the shark, right through the heart of the other ways, the shark rivers, through, all the way up to US 41. Um, had to travel at night a couple times and took the time to put the camera on the tripod and try to capture it. Yesterday was one of the most unique and amazing days of my life. We uh, pulled nearly 12 miles through the sawgrass of the heart of the Everglades. We were originally intending on a six and a half mile day to the landing this in Gumbo and Rainbow County for the night. There wasn't a suitable campsite there. No, we needed to um, get some miles under our belt and push on into the night. So we had about two hours in the dark following the line, kind of flying by instruments. Yes. I, mean, I ran over two alligators and nearly threw me out of my kayak. And you couldn't quite tell what was coming around each corner. And it turns out the cattails from all the all the runoff is so thick here that we couldn't see anything, had to plow our way through. We finally found some little piece of dry land and set camp at night. Now we have to find a way back to the trail this morning. This is, I've only given this talk a couple times, and um, it's weird hearing my voice. I have to get used to that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, it gives you a little taste of what this sawgrass landscape was like. Um, and, you know, from a, from a conservation or everybody standpoint, you, know, you, hear, you hear people talk about cattails being a sign of excessive nutrient runoff and, and, and pollution, but it, 
the juxtaposition of being in this pristine feeling open sawgrass environment where you feel like you can just reach down and drink the water is so clear and then to confront kind of the end of the sewage pipe from some of the sugar cane lands and other areas near runoff to the north in the bottom of this canal it was like this canyon of cattails and you could smell the organic um, soil and you know I, I went it took a half hour to pull back out of the sawgrass to filter our water for that night because it just did not feel clean. Um, and it's just, just interesting how sensitive the Everglades are to phosphorus and um, things that become pollutants when they get you know, beyond certain levels. This was um, kind of a crazy night, but um, we had to figure out, you know, we knew our route, but we didn't know how we were going to sleep out there necessarily. We found some USGS like instrument clusters where there was some little plywood where we slept one of the nights and I had a couple of air beds stuffed in the bow of my kayak there. I blew up and I was slept floating on four feet of water um, and learned the hard way that your head and the upper part of your body weighs up way more than your legs do because I crawled in that thing through thick mosquitoes like trying to seek refuge, try to get settled the thing's just listing like head first towards the uh, towards the sawgrass and I tried to like wiggle around and fix it. It just got worse. The other guys they had dry land up on like a wooden structure that night, so they're just listing and you can't do anything about it. Um, so I got out, you know, naked in the sawgrass and figured out how to reposition it, put the feet hanging over and then climb back in. And I slept like eight hours that night. But it was it was one of the more you know, intense half hours of bedtime ritual. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we moved on north from the Shark River, and this is kind of the, the, the true heart of the Everglades. And if you hear about um, efforts to restore the sheet flow, and restore the water flow to the Everglades, they're elevating, um, they have plans to elevate nine miles of the Tamiami Trail into a bridge, which is now functioning like a dam. It's starting the Everglades National Park for water and drowning tree islands and the other areas to the north because it's become essentially a reservoir. So they're fixing some of that and they need to see. Um, so we moved, um, there was a video clip that I don't, I don't know where it went, but um, we moved from there into the back of Hatchie Strand. Um, 